Let's talk about Fracture. Fracture is a powerful tool in Unreal, and I think a lot of the times people tend to use it in a dynamic context, as in like you're playing a game and a player shoots an object and bits of it break off or chip off or whatever. The other way that you can use it is you can cash out, aka save a simulation and then use it in a level sequence. We're gonna use it in a third context, which is as a world building tool. So there are a couple of really good introductions to using this tool that I think you should definitely invest a little bit of time in. The first one here, there's this uh, long post from Michael Balog on uh, Chaos Destruction on the Epic Dev community. And it goes through all of the different kinds of fractures there are and clustering and all the rest of it. And the videos are very long and they're very, very useful. So if you think you're gonna use this system, this is absolutely worth your time. And I'm not gonna duplicate any of this content if I can avoid it. The other really great channel for this kind of stuff is Build Games with John. He's got all kinds of really phenomenal tutorials. And this one will cover how to set up a fracture so that you can shoot it with the gun in the first person template and it'll explode and stuff like that. So anyway, these two are, are super useful and I'll include links to them in the description for this video. But I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of run through here and make some simple fracture thing and then we'll use it uh, as a world building source mesh. So let's see, let's go ahead and we'll make a Go to the modeling mode, make a box. We'll hit accept. And I'm just gonna make this thing kind of squarish and flattish. Something like that's probably okay. We're gonna go ahead and bake the transform information so that we lose all the scaling information. It just becomes a uniform there. With the, with the actor selected, the static mesh actor, we can go to Fracture. The first part is gonna to be to create a geometry collection. Geometry collection is what is going to be fracturable. So we, with the actor selected, press new, and wherever it wants to put that is gonna be okay. I'm gonna call this one GC box. And this is gonna be, oh, I don't know. You could find it over here. If I go to all, we can just, Navigate over to wherever that geometry collection is. Give it a little save there. Okay, so here's our geometry collection. I'm gonna do a brick fracture on it. And brick is a little bit peculiar in that the geometry needs to be oriented in the Y axis to get the brick offset. So I'll show you what that means here in a second. So with this thing selected, I'm gonna go over to brick and it's gonna do its best to sort of scale these bricks. In fact, I think this might be just default size, so I'm gonna take that back. It doesn't care what the actual geometry is, but you can see there's gonna be like a long piece along the top here that's gonna be left over. So I wanna make sure that my brick height is enough that I get a nice clean cut there. And I'm gonna get a little sliver here. Actually, let's see, where is it? No, that's okay. So uh, it's useful to just kind of hop over. Well, I don't know which one. Yeah, there we go. So you can get a sense for here in the right view uh, whether or not your length is appropriate and whatever. You just want to make sure you don't end up with a situation where you have like a little sliver like that, unless that's what you want. Anyway, that's going to be fine. Just just make sure we've got nice full coverage there. Head back over to perspective. And I'm just going to hit fracture. Let me look at the depth here. Yeah, that's fine. So now that this is all fractured, if I wanted to see what happens, watch it simulate. I can go to these three dots here and select simulate. It will play, it will fall, and it will fall apart. Voila, that's pretty cool, right? So now that I've got it fractured, I can go ahead and orient this thing however I want. And I'm gonna scoot it over here. And this doesn't preclude me now that I've moved it from adding more fractures to it, which is exactly what I'm gonna do kind of get it positioned because I'm just going to drop it around these three pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and do a uniform fracture on the whole thing. Let me go to my fracture hierarchy. You see it's, I just had one piece selected. So it just thinks I want to fracture that one piece, but I want to fracture everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and increase, maybe not quite that much. That's quite a bit. That's okay though. I just want it to kind of fall apart. And so what I'm going to be preserving here is the brick, the original brick cut. In fact, let me just select a few of these here in the middle, make this nice and clear. This is ultimately where we end up going. Fracture. 
Great. Okay. So I'm going to head over to selection just to kind of clear that up. And you can see now we have all those nice tight fractures. And if I drop it now, it's going to kind of fall apart. Maybe not quite as dramatically as we might hope, but we can increase that drama factor by just dropping it from a little bit higher up. We'll see how this goes. There we go. So one of the things that you can do is you can control the amount of force required to break it at various fracture levels. So with this thing selected, let me head back over to the fracture thing. And this is covered like way more in depth in the, those uh, tutorials that I posted earlier, but there's a hierarchy, right? So there's the, the, the first fracture value breaking from zero to the bigger bricks. And then within the, the sort of sub fracture here, there's going to be like an additional level down. And if you go and select the geometry collection and then go to GC, and then I think it's damage, damage threshold. You can reduce these values. And I think I've got three here, three, three cluster levels. So th this will make sense. Um, but you can add more if you add more cluster levels. So I'm just going to drop this to something much, much lower. I don't actually know if I have a second level there, but I believe I do. Anyway, let's see. It should, it should be a little bit more breaky. Yeah. So now all these little pieces here are kind of flying everywhere and that's nice. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is I want to save this data out so that I can export this fractured geometry as a static mesh, which is going to be important for the geometry scripting component, which we'll talk about here shortly. So to do that with the geometry collection selected, I go to actor and then chaos and then create cache manager. You probably want to be a little bit specific about where to save this, but I'm just going to put it probably at the root there of the project. And now that I've got that cache manager added, it's going to automatically add this chaos cache manager actor. And if you click on it, you can see it's going to be set to record. So if I hit play now, what it's doing is it's actually storing the position of each one of these pieces throughout this entire simulation. So I'm just going to kind of let it go and let it cook for a second. And then once things generally stop moving, okay, that's great. So now with the chaos cache manager selected, I can change this from record to play. And then I'm just going to type in a value of 100 that will move it a hundred seconds forward in the simulation where presumably there's no data. If you just kind of get in here and drag it, it can radically leap forward and you end up having to sit there and, and wait for a second. So anyway, this thing is now ready to be exported as a static mesh. So I'm going to select it. And what you notice is when I select it, it goes back to its original state. If you're dealing with 5.2 or an earlier version, it'll stay put, right? This is a, I'm not sure if it's a bug or it's just a different behavior that can be a little bit confusing in 5.3. So in the fracture mode menu here, I'm going to go down to utilities and we're going to select to mesh. Now this is very important. There's this option here per bone. If you don't deselect it, it's going to export a static mesh for every single piece, which is obviously a lot of static meshes. I just want one. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect that and it'll export the whole thing as a single piece. And we just hit convert. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one SM. Let me turn my caps lock off. SM underscore FRC for fracture. And let's see if I'm correct there. And oh, I made one tiny mistake, which is a common mistake. And I'm kind of glad I did. You want to make sure you have selected the top uh, node there. So I'm just going to delete this. I probably just exported like one of these little bricks out. All right. So with the top node selected there, uh, this all looks good. Let me just actually, I'm just going to poke this thing one more time. Run it. Okay, cool. We will. Select the asset, hit convert. Save selected. Cool. All right. So I'm just going to scoot this out of the way and we can see here is our new static mesh. Now there's something that's kind of worth mentioning about this. If you look at the icon here, it's like super tiny. And the reason for that is my guess is probably we got some pieces that fell way, 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 way down there. Right. So there's a, a really, really useful and fairly simple trick that you can do here in engine. If you type sleep, 
there's this FS sleep disable thing, which is just a volume. And anything that, that falls into this volume will be essentially turned into a static mesh object if you set it to kill. So if you're doing any kind of simulation like this where you have a gigantic amount of pieces and they're kind of flying everywhere and uh, who knows what's going to happen, it's not that much fun to have to go down and, and grab all these pieces. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But if you just uh, make one of these little sleep fields, it's a good idea to drag it into your project. You don't really want to ever modify engine content directly. And then just this field behavior, if you just set this to kill, then anything that hits it will just immediately freeze and it makes it really nice and easy to clean it up. But I'm, I'm not that worried about it right now. So uh, if I did want to clean it up, you can just go to modeling. And we're going to go down to uh, attributes. And we're going to make some polygroups, generate polygroups. And we want to do it from connected tries. We'll hit accept there. And then we can go to modeling, polygroup edit. I'm going to set this so that I'm only working on faces here. And uh, go ahead and just kind of do like a drag select over all of these. And then you could just invert your selection like this. And it should select all that stuff down there. We can hit accept. And then to confirm that we have correctly clean up our geo, you can go to the pivot and just hit center. And if it looks like you are in the reasonable center of your geometry, you're good to go. So we'll hit accept there and we can navigate back over and we can see that our thumbnail looks as reasonable as it should. Most of it here is, is centered and we can see everything. If you want to do, you could, you could get rid of these little extra pieces here, but they're not going to make a big difference for the demonstration. So I'm going to leave them. Okay, cool. And the next video, we are going to use this as a target mesh to generate some nice looking world appropriate geometry with like nice edges and, and UVs and, and uh, whatnot. So stick around for that.